Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, after reviewing Gakuma, um, here is the next figure in in my collection of the video. Um, actually, this figure I'm about to show you guys did not show up in my collection of the video because um one um it kind of took days for it to come. And two, um, it just came about like three days ago. And um, so um, here is the figure that I did not show in my collection update video until three days ago. Nars from Ultra 7. For its history, it's pretty brief. But not too brief like Geronda and Geronimon's history. So, for his history, um, he appeared in episode 11 where he had, um, Alien Wild as a servant. And he was, like, Alien Wild was, like, attacking uh, Dan until, uh, Dan uh, defeated, defeated Alien Wild. And after that, Ultra Garrison then saw Nars as a flying, uh, in his flying saucer form. And... Dan transforms into Ultra 7 and begins to fight um, Nars in his saucer form. But then Nars begins to t spin around, making Ultra 7 dizzy and gives him a headache. And when that happened, um, Nars then goes into his dragon form, and which is the form we're looking at, and begins to uh, curl up Ultra 7 like a snake. And he goes way so tight so that way Ultra 7 would like lose oxygen and everything and um Ultra 7 like beginning to die until um he then until the sun powers him up and begins to like tore him to pieces and tore Nars into pieces and Ultra 7 leaves and that's pretty much it for his for his, his, for his first appearance he was then mentioned in in the Ultra Galaxy Legends movie where he was in his flying saucer form fighting the Zap team until the Zap until he goes into his dragon form again and begins to um, um curl up the Zap team and Alien Zinton comes and Shinosaka comes and beats beats Zenton and um then um he, and then Shinosaka then transforms into Ultraman Dino and fights Nars and he then did the same thing for what Ultra 7 did him torn to pieces and that's pretty much it for Nars's history for Diesel it's pretty accurate I believe I mean the texture on him even his legs are pretty nice I mean, if you can see here, he has a bunch of scarf marks. But yeah, it's pretty accurate. I mean, he looks a little too thin, but yeah, accurate. I then noticed these, and then I figured out that the Nars puppet actually has these bumps. Oh so yeah. But one thing that really confuses me is the back, of course. Like, it's it has this orange color. Like, it's really confusing. But yeah, it's pretty... Good. For articulation, um, you can see he has none. He is just some plastic statue. What you could just do to him is bend him like this. Like a bendable figure, but even though if it is a bendable figure, it would ha like have holes in it. But yeah, it's probably the reason why people don't like this figure, because he doesn't have articulation, and it's just meant to be a figure to be bendable like... And remember when I s and remember that King of Swords three figure where it's like too short, but if you like put him in this position, he's long. Well, this is the same thing with Nars. Like if you compare him with Bemular here, he's short, but if you compare him like this, he's long. And Nars's length is one hundred and twenty meters long. So that means his length is way longer than King of Swords 3 length, because King of Swords 3 length is 
105 meters. Let's try the towering beast Monsigar. Yeah, this is accurate. Gomidi? Yeah, it's accurate. Okay. Alien Zamu? Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. And Chaos Header Iblis. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. And for Rarity, uh, he was released in the EX series, so he should be pretty common. History's brief, details good, articulation none, sizing's good, and Rarity is pretty common. So now I'm giving this figure a 6.5 out of 10. I mean, people just don't like this figure because he doesn't have articulation at all. Like, he's just a bendable figure, but I happen to like him. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye.